A federal judge in Kentucky has just handed down a disappointing decision granting the state's governor the right to continue blocking as many constituents as he wants on Twitter and Facebook. The suit was brought by two blocked constituents who argued the governor's blocking of their accounts amounted to a violation of their First Amendment rights. It goes without saying the blocked accounts were critical of Governor Matt Bevan. Rather than recognize the harm done by an official government account that only removes criticism, the court likens the blocks to throwing away hate mail or hanging up on aggrieved constituents. From the decision, PDF, here, Internet speakers want to use private Internet platforms, Twitter and Facebook, used by the governor to express his views and opinions as governor, to force him to listen to their views. He might be wise to do so, but since a person's right to speak is not infringed when government simply ignores that person while listening to others. Minnesota State BD. For CMTY. Colleges v. Knight. 465 U.S. 271, 286, 1984. The governor is not required to do so. That is why plaintiffs are unlikely to succeed on the merits of this case and consequently their motion, R. 3, is denied. The First Amendment gives you a right to speak but not a right to be heard. That's the court's opinion. This doesn't bode well for plaintiffs currently challenging Donald Trump in court over his Twitter block list. As the court points out later, being blocked by the governor doesn't prevent constituents from telling others about their problems with the state's governor. Just won't be able to confront him more directly. Ultimately, Governor Bevan is not suppressing speech but is merely calling his Facebook and Twitter accounts to present a public image that he desires. As a general matter, constituents don't have a right to be heard and Governor Bevan has no obligation to listen to everyone who wishes to speak to him. Further the term, block conjures an image much harsher than reality. No one is being blocked from speaking on Twitter on Facebook. They are still free to post on their own walls and on friends' walls whatever they want about Governor Bevan. But this take, however logical it may appear, misapprehends the balance of power. The judge has given Governor Bevan exactly what he wants, a public account for pro-governor propaganda, basically. The court agrees Governor Bevan should be allowed to restrict anything that doesn't portray him as he'd like to be seen. As Venkat Balasubramani points out, social media accounts are there to encourage public interaction, not serve as a virtual government sound trucks. Assuming for the sake of argument that a politician may set up a page solely to make her views, you wonder whether Bevin really adhered to whatever restrictions this may require. You wonder whether his account posted the stray praise or personal matter. And it also allowed comments. I mean, that's pretty much the whole point of social media, join the conversation, but it seems that, once he's out there posting on a particular topic, the bar, if it should exist at all, should be high for him to restrict others from chiming in. The court agrees with Bevin's argument, which is similar to one raised by President Trump that inability to restrict unwanted messages on his pages undermines the public images that he desires. This sounds a lot like the exclusion of certain viewpoints, which of course is not allowed. Eric Goldman breaks it down further, in noting that the governor's social media accounts are unambiguously official accounts. These are government accounts and the government is deleting comments and posts by critics of the government. The end result is a gift to politicians who are both thin-skinned and power-hungry. The court embraces a distressingly authoritarian view of government. The court says Governor Bevan is not suppressing speech but is merely calling his Facebook and Twitter accounts to present a public image that he desires. WTF. We aren't talking about some shut-in person who little connection to others and no interest in engaging with the world, we're talking about one of the 50 elected governors in our country. The court is trying to justify the governor's censorious efforts by euphemistically saying the governor isn't suppressing speech, though that's exactly what the governor is doing, and dictators routinely justify censorship on the grounds that he, she is just trying to present a public image that he desires. FFS. What's the court's solution? Post stuff wherever you want, just not on official government pages. And if you don't like the status quo, change it. Ultimately, Governor Bevin is accountable to the public. The public may view his page and account if they wish and they may choose to re-elect him or choose to elect someone else if they are unhappy with how he administers his social media accounts, though plaintiffs might disagree with his social media practices, the place to register that disagreement is at the polls. Got that, citizens? If you're unhappy with your representation, don't bother alleging violations of your rights. Nope, just bide your time and vote in the next election. In the meantime, elected officials will be able to run official social media accounts filled with nothing but praise, presenting a skewed view of their popularity.
And this is all thanks to a federal judge, someone who never has to answer to angry citizens for bad decisions because his position isn't subject to voters' whims.